Hello! Welcome to another video of anticipated book releases. I know 2024 is winding down and probably for next month I'm probably gonna have to do a November and December combined because not a lot comes out in those months, but October is still busy. Um, we're going into spooky season, which is exciting. And um, yeah, we've got some good books, so let's get started. First on deck is October 1st, and there is one book coming out on October 1st that I'm excited about, and it is probably the second most anticipated book. Um, you'll see my most anticipated later in this video, but second most anticipated book. This is The City in Glass by Nevo. I love Nevo. She is one of my current favorite authors, auto read, auto buy kind of author. So I am buying this. I suspect that I will find out, I'm, I'm filming this on September 30th. So I'll find out tomorrow morning if this is one of the October picks in the Aardvark book box. And if it is, um, I'm gonna be excited. Um, if you're interested in Aardvard book box, they're essentially similar to Book of the Month. I just like them a lot better. Um, and if you're interested, if you want to sign up, if you want to, you know, give me a little shout out to them. They don't have a proper referral system yet, but um, if you want to give me a shout out, if you do sign up for it, I'll put that info um, in the description box below. So, The City in Glass. Um, a demon, an angel, a city that burns at the heart of the world. The demon Vitrine, immortal, powerful, and capricious, loves the dazzling city of Azrael. She has mothered, married, and maddened the city and its people for generations and built it into a place of joy, desire, revelry, and riot. And then the angels come and the city falls. Vitrine is left with nothing but memories and a book containing the names of those she has lost. And an angel, now bound by her mad, grief-stricken curse to haunt the city he burned. There is more, but I'm going to leave it at that. That is essentially all I've really paid attention to for this. But um, I'm excited. Love her writing. Love her mind. I'm super excited for this. So sitting glass, October 1st. All right, moving on to October 8th. This is a big day. There are four releases that I'm interested in. Let's start with the first one that I actually have an advanced reader copy of. I just got approved for it today via NetGalley. This is Blood of the Old Kings by King Sung Il. Um, this is translated from Korean, translated by Anton Hur, who has done a lot of translation in the past, and he actually had a book released um, earlier this year, which is, I think I'm like still like fifth on the waitlist in the library, so I'm excited to read that. But let's get to it. So, uh, Blood of the Old Kings begins an epic adventure in which three strangers journey through a vast empire that uses the power of dead wizards to conquer and subdue. From award-winning author Sung Il Kim and translated by highly acclaimed Anton Hur. Um, so yeah, I, I think that kind of like description blurb without going into the whole synopsis really covers everything that I want to know about it. Um, I'm very excited since it comes out October 8th. Um, I am going to start reading it tonight just to actually get this arc read and review up. So look forward to that. Next on October 8th is Shoestring Theory by Mariana Costa. So this is a queer, madcap, friends to lovers to enemies to lovers time travel romance with the future of the world at stake. This charming fantasy is sure to satisfy fans of Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. So the kingdom of Farsala is broken and black clouds hang heavy over the arid lands. Former Grand Mage of the High Court, Cyril Lavere, has spent the last decade hiding himself away in a ramshackle hut by the sea, trying to catch any remaining fish for his cat familiar shoestring and suppressing his guilt over the kingdom's ruin. For he played his part, for as the king, Euphrates Margrave, descended further and further into paranoia, violence and madness, his grand mage and husband, Cyril, didn't do a thing to stop him. When shoestring wanders away and dies one morning, Cyril knows his days are finally numbered. But are there enough left to have a last go at putting things right? With his remaining lifeblood, he casts a powerful spell that catapults him back in time to a happier period of for sale in history. So, um, yeah, madcap time travel romance. Um, I'm glad that they put in the blurb for anybody sensitive to it that the cat dies at the beginning. <laughs> so there it is. But um, I'm quite excited for this one. I don't, I've never read Mariana Costa, but this sounds interesting. I'm excited. I've already put it um, in my library to notify me when it's available, and or read it before the end of the year. I'm kind of in the mood for something like this, so we'll see. Next is something silly, and I could not resist this one when I saw it, even though it probably is not like to my taste, but I have to read it. This is The Nightmare Before Christmas by Sarah Rosh. Um, essentially, 
the prince of the Halloween court and the prince of the Christmas court fall for each other. <laughs> a very Nightmare Before Christmas meets a red, white, and royal blue essentially is what is being pitched as. And um, yeah, I, I, gotta do, I gotta do it. It's silly. It looks fun. Uh, I'm reading it. I, I have no excuse. It just looks silly and fun. And apparently the paperback copy is going to have um, red, ruby red sprayed edges. So I might buy it. We'll see. I'll go to the bookstore and read the first chapter and see how I feel. If I'm not feeling it, you know, which I usually don't with, you know, straight up romances, then um, I will get it from the library. Actually, I should note to self, put it, put a notify on the library. Um, but yes, October 8th, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Looks like, fun. looks like it's gonna be fun. Next and last on October 8th is Sword Crossed by Freya Marsky. And um, are these all romances, essentially, except for the first one? Uh, this is um, a LGBTQ uh, fantasy romance. So, Matinus J, dutiful heir to a struggling family business, needs to hire an experienced swordsman to serve as best man for his arranged marriage. Sword challenge at the ceremony could destroy all hope of restoring his family wealth, something that Matty has been trying and failing to do for the past 10 years. What he can afford, unfortunately, is a part-time con artist and full-time charming menace, Luca Pierre. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, looks fun, gay romance, fantasy romance. Um, who am I? Why are all these appealing to me? Gonna read it at the, gonna read the first chapter or two at the bookstore, definitely putting it for notify me at the library. So we'll see. Well, I guess, I guess by the end of the year, we'll see how many of these I'll have actually read. I don't know. I feel like the mood is coming on me. So we'll see. All right. Next is October 15th. And the first one here, I have two books. The first, this is my most anticipated for October. And this is On Vicious Worlds by Bethany Jacobs. I loved the first book um these broken these burning stars right here loved it so much very underrated not talked about enough uh, sci-fi space opera kind of situation it's queer um it's ridiculous great character work and on vicious worlds is the sequel so um I, I, I don't want to talk about the synopsis because that'll be spoilers for the first one. But essentially, there is the a space ruled by what is called the kingdom. And there are different families that are family factions that have power. And in the first book, um, a bunch of people from different factions are vying for the singular object, you know, kind of a MacGuffin kind of situation. But they all have different links to each other in varying ways. One of the characters is one of the best unhinged villain kind of maybe yeah the situation I've ever read like I cannot stop thinking about Isek in that first book um and it's just great fun uh, I think it's highly underrated I think more people should read this um I, I feel like this if it, when it, if it finds its right audience it's just it's a banger it's just so good so highly recommend it I am so excited for book two um I thought I was going to reread but this is already coming out in like two weeks so I don't know if I have time to do that but I may flip through and just like reread some good some good parts probably just the Isek parts because Isek was banging um so yeah I'm excited on Vicious Worlds soon 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 all right next second book coming out on October 15th is American Rapture by CJ Leeds lead um I actually do own Mavefly which was their debut I believe still haven't read it but it, they're very interesting so American Rapture very short synopsis here on Goodreads a virus is spreading across America transforming the affected and making them feral with lust Sophie, a good Catholic girl, must traverse the hellscape of the Midwest to try to find her family while the world around her burns. Along the way, she discovers that there are far worse fates than dying a virgin. Look at this cover. It's fantastic. I am so interested. Chuck Tingle loves this author. So, lots of factors making this very interesting. So, definitely putting it on my library uh, holds and we'll actually, we'll check it out at the bookstore read the first chapter or two and see if I like it and buy it so I do have to read I, I maybe not buy it I do have to read Mayfly first um I, I I can't do that to myself I need to read the first book before I even think about buying this one but definitely putting in a library hold moving on to the last Tuesday in October this is October 29th I have two books the first oh 
Oh my god, there's a lot of releases that I want this this month. I completely forgot about this one. This is The Bloodless Princes by Charlotte Bond. This is a sequel to the... Where, where are you? The Fireborn Blade by her. So um, I should pull this out because I love this cover. The Fireborn Blade. This is a sequel novella to this. Um, this was so much fun. Very unexpected. Essentially, this night, Maddie, um, she's disgraced. She believes that the only way to get her good graces and name back is to get this mystical blade from a dragon, dragon's lair. Hijinks, magic, all kinds of stuff ensue, and this is a sequel. I don't want to talk about the synopsis because I feel like that's kind of a spoiler for what happens at the end of this book, but I am excited. Look at this cover, look at Maddie, and look at, um, what is her name? I'm blanking, her mage friend, uh, <laughs> Saraline. Maddie and Saraline, look at them. Look how amazing they look. So, um, Fireborn Blade sequel, uh, maybe I'll reread this, maybe I won't, but definitely buying the bloodless princess so um very exciting october i think yeah last but not least for october is blood over bright haven by m l wang now i know this was previously released i believe self-published much like um her first novel which i am blanking on but this is now being released in a physical edition by uh del rey so this is essentially kind of a dark academia magic situation so an orphan since the age of four, Siona has always had to, more to prove than her fellow students. For 20 years, she has devoted every waking moment to the study of magic, fueled by a mad desire to achieve the impossible, to be the first woman ever admitted to the high magistry. When she finally claws her way up the ranks to become a high mage, however, she finds that her challenges have just begun. Her new colleagues will stop at nothing to let her know she is unwelcome, beginning with giving her a janitor instead of a qualified lab assistant. What neither Siona nor her peers realize is that her taciturn assistant was once more than a janitor. Before he mopped floors for the mages, Thomil was a nomadic hunter from beyond Tyran's magical barrier. 10 years have passed since he survived the perilous crossing that killed his family. But working for a high mage, he sees the opportunity to finally understand the forces that decimated his tribe, drove him from his homeland, and keep the Tyrannish in power. Though they're fra through their fractious relationship, mage and outsider uncover an ancient secret that could change the course of magic forever, if it doesn't get them killed first. So, um, sounds very interesting. I am excited for this one. Um, I have not read their first book, or I think they had a second one as well, but this, it, this is speaking to me. It does seem very, you know, straightforward kind of fantasy situation. But I'm kind of feeling that right now. That is it for October releases. Lots of fun stuff going on. Um, let me know what you're excited for. Let me know what else I haven't mentioned that you're excited to read this month. Because sometimes um, I have in the past like seen one or two books um, mentioned that I was like, oh, that sounds interesting and put it on my TBR just to check out later. So definitely let me know um, what you're looking forward to. If you just want to leave an emoji, how about um, stars for On Vicious Worlds, which is just, you know, space opera. So um, as always, thank you for watching and I will catch you next time. Bye.